Hello, everybody, to this episode of Talks Beyond Time and Place. My name is Philip Rettgas, and my guest today is Juan Carlos Vidina. This, this side. Hello. Uh, welcome, welcome, Juan. Thanks for, for being here. Uh, Thanks Juan for is, me. is the director of films like uh, Painless and, of course, also The Limehouse Golem, which we're also going to talk about a bit. So it's very nice to have you here today. And um, maybe before we start talking about uh, films, I wanted to ask you what inspired you to become a film director? Uh, well, when I was a um... When I was a teenager, um, I, I, I love writing stories, um, but I also love uh, painting, making photographs, music. Uh, I had piano lessons, you know, uh, listen to music. So, uh, uh, and I, I love reading books. I, I guess I, need, I needed a lot to escape from, from uh, you know, uh, my family circumstances, you know, all the all the the horrors of growing up like a teenager, all that sort of thing, you know. I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, it's like, oh my god, I want to die, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> so uh, so yes, uh, I basically um, all that stuff started brewing, and I didn't really. Um, know what I wanted to do with it but at some point I decided I love movies so much and movies have all of that you know they have story telling stories making pictures music you know so I thought hell this is why this is my calling I should yeah. make movies you know I should make movies and so that's how it started yeah. basically yeah. so i decided to study film and and i got into a uh preparatory uh film school uh, and then in, in in college i graduated from uh, film studies in skin college in the Sorbonne university and started making short films and writing scripts and that's how i got in the, in the business yeah. yeah what was your first feature film where only you were responsible uh, my first feature film was uh, called Painless, uh, Insensible, uh, Insensibles in Spanish. It was a French-Spanish uh, production, uh, which was shot in, uh, in, in, in Barcelona region, in the region of Barcelona. And um, uh, with, with, with a great uh, Spanish, uh, Spanish cast. There was Alex Brendemoule in it, uh, Thomas Le Marquis. Um, yeah, so... Um, I, I haven't seen it yet, but I read about it. And I think it's also, maybe we can talk about this in, in a second, quite a, quite a shocker in a way, because there were also many, many children uh, involved in the movie. But let's talk about that one uh, in a second. I also had, uh, was, was wondering, have there been... Uh, or, or which which directors inspired you, if there were any, there probably were. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, well, when when I when I grew up, I was uh, I was extremely um, impacted by by filmmakers like uh, Paul Verhoeven, John Carpenter, Stanley Kubrick, um, Ridley Scott. You know. Uh, so, uh, but I also, um, I mean, obviously, I, I, I discovered movies like, uh, for instance, Blade Runner, Robocop, movies like that in cinemas when they were released in the 80s. I had the other things like, you know, uh, Predator or, you know, uh, Hunt for the Red October. I mean, th those, I mean, the, the end 80s and then 90s were, of course, uh, a great time for, for cinema, for great I mean, blockbusters at that time were pretty different from today. You know, That's there right. was a, a m much more or less uh, spandex and, and superheroes, and 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 they were actually movies about, you know, you could say, you know, more more targeted at adults and or mm -hmm. I mean, um, and uh, or with, with more adult subject matter and 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 they're still well very very big budget movies and so i mean cinema was i think pretty different at that time and uh, also there was uh i I, I grew up in spain in the 80s so and uh, spanish television was very poor at the time so they didn't have a lot of money 
for uh, acquiring new films so they couldn't really afford the new releases mm -hmm. so so actually they had a big they, they had all the catalog of the of the american studios so um, all the time in, in spanish tv you, you had like uh you know uh, john ford movies raw walsh movies you know howard Hawks movies you know robert aldrich i mean uh, sam Peckin back you had all those films over and over and over you know the billy wilders the you know the jack tone you know all those movies that they were coming on on um uh on, on tv and, and you could just watch them all the time so there's always there was always a classic that you could watch on tv with very good spanish dubbing so i i discovered all those movies in on the spanish tv actually and, and that's how i got a like a uh you could say a film culture uh with the classics you know yeah and then later when i was uh when, when i went to film school the big discovery for me was uh was asian cinema you know mm -hmm. it was you know when, when i when i became a film student i discovered basically i i was familiar with japanese cinema with kurosawa and Mamura, and but uh, I, I really discovered Hong Kong cinema, Chinese cinema, and 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 of course uh, Korean cinema when I was uh, a film student. And at that time, of course, that was a bit fringe. I mean, that was you know at the end of the nineties. Nobody, the, the the big audiences didn't didn't really know uh, in that in that type of cinema. It was really kind of like. Uh, film buffs that, that were starting to get really acquainted with, with those movies you know but it was for, for me it was very yeah it was very influential yeah yeah i understand what you mean and i also think the what you just said with the in comparison with the blockbusters in the late 80s and early 90s in comparison to now i uh they're they're more more adult if you like i i, I see that I, I, yeah, there, most, there, there was there was a bigger variety of, yeah. of films you know yeah that's that's there true. Was, yeah, uh, as you say. no no yeah. superheroes no not all the, I, I mean I, I'm uh, very much very fond of this yeah. too so yeah casino casino was a uh, i'm not saying that i'm not fond of it but uh, <laughs> i mean i i like some of them mm. but i am also i am also very fond of diversity mm. and 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 we are in a world today where it seems that nothing else can exist but a certain a certain type of thing mm -hmm. we are in a world where you know diversity is disappearing you know in certain mm -hmm. categories mm -hmm. and in and certainly in the big budget cinema that diversity today is uh, has almost disappeared you know and all you get is these big big productions and i have nothing against superhero movies some of them i really love and i really enjoy what i find uh, a bit um, what i'm really a bit sorry about is that when you start getting into a world where that's all you can see you know that's all that can be made for for a big budget so in a sense, it's very refreshing to see movies like Dune, because they are very they are exceptional in that. Today, it's really very very difficult to make big budget movies that are not part of a of a superhero franchise. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Well, uh, Juan, this whole talk that we do, of course, is uh, it's all about London beyond time and place because this is my topic uh, basically. So. Um, of course, one of the films I want to talk about with you is The Limehouse Golem, based on the novel by Peter Ackroyd, uh, Dan Lino and The Limehouse Golem. And uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about uh, uh, the, the process of how the novel, uh, I think, was turned into a script by Jane Goldman and, and then into the film, which you directed. So, so when did you enter the process of the production? Um, so... Uh... After after making my first film, Painless, I, it was it was uh, it was shown at uh, the Toronto Film Festival. Um, in, I think it was two thousand thirteen or something like that, or fourteen, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, uh, Stephen Woolley uh, saw the film and loved it, and 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 he wanted to meet me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my god, the producer of uh interview with the vampire and crying game wants to meet me so i was like really i mean i love this work as a producer uh and i loved meeting him as very uh cinephile producer great guy so i really enjoyed meeting him and, and, and he 
he told me it had been developing this uh, this project with for some time with Jane for I think they had been working on it for a year and they had a they had a first draft of the script and um, and actually I it clicked with me because I loved the I mean I I, I loved the, Jane's first draft was was brilliant and and um, and I loved the book I had read a I had read a bunch of books by Peter Ackroyd and um, that of course that one I had I had read uh, Oxnard I had read uh, mm -hmm. his book about London and I really I mean I've always loved. Uh, historical movies that are inspired in in a vision of an historical time that is mm -hmm. uh, that is more than the textbook uh, you know yeah and i really lo i love the way peter Ackroyd showed you all the things you will not find in textbooks you know i mean uh, you, you it will talk to you about what people were really feeling at that time you know uh, the, you know the, the the smells the the neuroses of the time the all, all the little uh, greedy details that you will never find in, in official in the official history mm. but we, which are much more closer I would say to the truth of that time and and uh, and, and touch on something that is universal because it, I didn't want to do a, like a period movie just for the sake of the period and and the nice costumes and all that uh, for me the period is interesting because you're actually shedding a different light on the human condition and and you can tell human stories that are universal mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if people are, are wearing long dresses or or big hats or whatever you know it's like it's the same human beings uh confronted to you know uh, the hardship of life you know the hardship of uh, of existing as a human of uh, finding your way in the labyrinth of the world in the labyrinth of life so i, I I really, really love the story uh, in that book, how Jane had uh, uh, decanted it in this uh, first draft. And so I met them and uh, we started wor working on a, um, on a second draft of the script because I always like to, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, um, appropriate a little bit uh, the the stories that i that i tell i, I need mm -hmm. to make them fit into my uh, my vision you know oh, so that yeah. was necessary to do that that phase of the work and to reach a draft that we were all confident that uh, that uh, would be the the best expression of the of the story so we we did that phase of work together and um, eventually we um, we reached the version of the script that was uh, that was shot. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's interesting. I mean, of course, I'm also a huge fan of Aykroyd and his works, and and the Limas Golem Hawksmoor. I've, I've I fell in love with with Hawksmoor and the idea of the Hawksmoor churches and <laughs> the connections with, between them. And I, I I I did a walk once where where I, where I covered all the the Hawksmoor churches uh, on on one day, so so and of course I'm also familiar with with Aykroyd's uh, London biography. It's one of my favorite books about London because it's great, and I think you really managed to what you just said to to capture this 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 maybe this Aykroydian atmosphere of of uh, how a time period uh, is is presented uh, apart from from what you get in the in the textbooks. I think that's that's what you do really well in the in the movie because there is like the atmosphere, you the smell, if you like, you can can get a a taste of that. I think you really transported his vision uh, quite well on onto the screen. Thank you. So yeah, yeah, I, I really do. So what maybe was it was it difficult kind of of yeah creating this this Victorian uh, uh, movie also in, in comparison to to or do your own version of a Victorian, uh, of a movie set in a Victorian period, also in comparison to to the many Jack the Ripper and Sherlock Holmes productions, where, where this is, yeah. so many of them where where they portray portray the Victorian era. So yeah, what was your take on that? Um, well, for for me, uh, I, I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to put the audience in the in a sort of like nightmarish vision mm -hmm. of the of the era or nightmarish vision of London that then for, for me it's um it's a story where you are it's a hood on it but where you are placed in 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 the skin of different characters as potentially 
the killer and and what happens when you see the whole world through their eyes as the killer you know and, and mm. so it was really interesting because it was uh creating this vision of of london which is you know the crucible of the industrial world at that time you know the, the possibly one of the most important cities in the world because anchored in a very strong culture but also open to the world oh, and it's like a cosmopolis you know of the time you know like new york could be uh, today or um so uh so it, it it's um it, it was really uh, those different to put the audience in those different characters as you know being characters that are cruising through this like riddle of of the of the city you know and mm. and, and 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 what it means you know all the all the the energies of this time you know and and um uh so yeah, it was it was creating this sense of you are in a nightmare, you are in a dream, you know, you're you're seeing all these things. So 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 I wanted to create something that was not strictly realistic, you know, that yeah. had something that has something very, uh, in a sense, a little bit extreme or theatrical in its DNA, you know, because also it's a movie. I mean, that is centered around the, the musicals and and um, and uh, you know the. Uh, society as theater and and, and 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 you know the confusion between uh, what's happening on the stage and what ha what's happening in the streets right you know the, the those theaters those musicals were really more than just theaters you know there were places where people would go there and spend their whole day there eat there fuck there mm -hmm. you know you know <laughs> all, i mean they, they were really places where people would go there and lose themselves and right spend all their days and and so it was more than stories or songs or it was really a continuation of the streets you know a representation of the streets of london so, so you know yeah. so that's really the sense of this little uh how, how these theaters become became the the you know echoes of what was mm -hmm. happening in this and all that so all, all those parameters were were really important in how we were going to uh, build this vision so so yeah so i wanted something really far from the you know big budget academic uh, mm. vi vision that you find in a lot of movies you know i wanted something uh, yeah a, a bit extreme a bit uh, baroque you know a bit over the top a bit a bit uh, you know, like Moulin Rouge meets, uh, you know, a Hammer movie, and and uh, uh, you know, and and and, and you know, a, a horror movie. One of the, one of the the Roger Corman horror movies about Edgar Allan Poe. You know, yeah. <laughs> but I I think um, yeah, you're absolutely right, and this is maybe what's also uh, what what Eckhart also did in his in his novel the the kind of there's the theater and then there's the life on the street which is also a kind of theater and all the the murders are kind of the, you know the 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 um the people are the audience because they want to see what's coming next and they they the, this bloodthirsty audience who love to go to the theater and see it on stage but also love love it when it happens on the streets so yeah there's this kind of of continuity yeah and i i like that you included um Ghost of a Flea by William Blake in, in one of the scenes. Uh, yes. I, I thought it was a nice hint, especially if you know a bit about Aykroyd and, and his references to, to Blake. Yeah, I mean, uh, Blake was was really central in, in, in all the creation of uh, the aesthetic world of the movie. I mean, mm. uh, uh, it's an artist that we uh, we both adore with uh, Grant Montgomery, who did all the production design, who became a, also a very good friend. Uh, and... Um, and we both loved, uh, especially John Martin and and uh, William Blake, and and those were the uh, the artists that that were uh, fundamental for the the creation of the the aesthetic world, the color palette of the movie. So yeah, it was. Uh, mm. But of course, that that representation, uh, the Ghost of the Flea, it's it, it's very scary, and it's and it's an image of the golem that uh, that right. We, both loved you know so. yeah yeah w would you say that the film is a horror film <laughs> um yeah i hope so i i hope it's a horror film i mean it's a it's a very uh, uh 
uh, I think horror film today is is a very uh, uh, flexible category, you know, for mm. a movie. You know, it's it's uh, there are many. I think any everything that every movie that tries to uh, play with the genres of of horror, you know, and uh, the, the the archetypes of horror, um, whether to just uh, scare or or to give a, a deeper meaning, you know, it's, it could be could be said it's a horror film, but it's also something more. Yeah, you know? that's right. Yeah. So let's maybe talk about the cast for a moment because, uh, yeah. Uh, the main one of the main characters is, is of course Inspector Kildare, who's brilliantly played by Bill Nighy, one of my favorite actors. But uh, he, the original, originally the the late Al Rickman uh, was cast to play the character, if I'm uh, correct. So can you maybe tell us a bit about how his illness and also his untimely death in, influenced the production? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, Alan was uh, Alan was cast uh, um, first for for playing uh, the role, and um, and uh, before we started the the, the production, he, I mean, he was he was diagnosed with a uh, with a terminal cancer. So uh, so yeah, we started the we we, we started the production. Uh, I mean, the production of the film on, under very complicated uh, auspices, you could say, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and basically, what happened after some time is that, uh, of course, he was too ill to continue, and so we had to uh, we had to recast uh, the role, and. Uh, and uh, Bill and I was uh, was available, and uh, and uh, with with uh, with the the blessing of Alan, who was always we we always kept in contact with him until the end. And with his blessing, we uh, I met with Bill, and he read the script. He really loved it, and uh, and he said yes. So um, so uh, so yes, Bill, Bill changed. Uh, I mean, of course, it's always. It's going to be a different version of the of the character, you know. But yeah, it's right. uh, yeah. uh, it, it was all very, of course, very painful and very, uh, you know. But it's it's very often the case. I mean, thank God, not for such tragic reasons, but uh, most of the time. But film production is usually very, very chaotic, and lots of mm. things happen. You know, and thank God, not these kind of things most of the time. But sometimes, these kind of tragic things can happen also in a in a in a film production, and it's yeah. very very painful. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I can imagine. So we started we started on a in a very painful. Uh, it was a very 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 painful start for the movie, but you we, you know I mean obviously I was really happy also that uh, that Bill could um, could could. Uh, take uh, take back the role and, and mm. continue you know yeah. yeah but i can imagine of course yeah, yeah. it must have been a and i think it's uh, he, he was an he was an incredible inspector killer and it's, i mean bill, bill, did, bill, bill did an incredible job and but it's true it's uh one part of you always of course uh, i mean uh, alan was a lovely person he was an incredible guy he was so generous you know and uh uh it was he loved my work he loved my movies he was always supportive of me as a director so it, it was a it was a it was like losing a friend so it was mm. very very yeah. painful yeah. yeah i can imagine that very much yeah um but i think i personally think the real star of the movie is olivia cook as as uh, elizabeth yes. Cree, right yeah. yeah so what was working with her like well, she she was she was fantastic. I mean, Olivia was very. Uh, she's 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 a war, warrior. She's very. Mm. Uh, she 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 has this appearance uh, of a frail uh, young lady from uh, the north of England, and she's very very strong inside. She's an old soul, mm. I'd say, and she's very strong. She was a couple of times. We we were shooting on on in very very hard conditions i think physically is one of the hardest shoots i've done it was very cold we we uh, ended the shoot i think it was mid-november mm -hmm. in 
North Yorkshire. So it was it was really cold. It was raining all the time. We were having storms all the time. It was really tough. And um, and she was ill twice through the through the the shot the, the shoot like really ill like she she was like uh and uh the kind of you know like you and me would probably stay in bed you know and she was mm -hmm. coming on set and doing yeah. the scene always being uh so it's quite impressive to see so much strength and determination and focus in a person that is so young you know at that time uh, she was early 20s so she was really young and, yeah and um, and that's really impressive always that is yeah she is. she deserves uh, she totally deserves her success and uh, i think now she's in the house of the dragon and the new hbo uh, um game of thrones prequel and mm -hmm. she's, she's gonna be brilliant in that yeah um, i think so too yeah it's always interesting to, to see how these careers also develop it, I, I mean hopefully we will see more of her but it's just interesting to see when I when I get older, what what is she gonna do? What's she doing now? Like in twenty years, <laughs> uh, something like that. So yeah, yeah who can say what, what what will happen in twenty years? Yeah, um, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, you know our artistic careers, of course, deploy in, in time, and uh, you know, and 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 I think for actors, it's always difficult, you know, mm. to predict how people are going. The things I think are changing and uh you know uh, uh hopefully we, we're gonna see more and more and more uh, you know uh, actors and actresses that that get to have long careers mm -hmm. and not be become obsolete once they they, they mm -hmm. reach 40 or 50 like we have seen sadly with many actors right. of the past generations that when they reach 45 or 50 there especially with women um, sadly you know yeah they right. they were considered uh, they were considered uh, they, they weren't cast anymore you know, so yeah or, or, that's yeah. true so we already mentioned your your first film painless uh quite a few times now can you can you tell us um yeah a bit about that and also maybe what was the inspiration for that what it's about and what was the inspiration for that because i read a bit uh, before but i thought it was interesting just to let you talk about it yeah painless um Venice is a movie uh, that happens in the during the spanish civil war i mean it start it, there are two intertwined stories and uh, there's a contemporary story um he basically unearths um that that black hole of history that happened just after the war because the spanish civil war of course was a kind of like a genocide a genocidal war you know um, one of these horrible uh, uh things that happened in 20th century and and uh, uh where people were systematically uh, massacred because of their beliefs or because of they, they, they weren't considered um, you know uh, good you know or good enough mm -hmm. by some extremists etc i mean yeah i think in germany you've had something like that too <laughs> similar experience yeah right if i remember yeah. well, well. <laughs> yes, <you do. laughs> so in yeah. spain we've had we definitely had that so and um and so we, uh, uh so he finds the trace of uh of his biological father who was actually um it belonged to a bunch of kids that were born just before the war and and had suffered from a disease actually a genetic disease where they couldn't feel pain mm -hmm. and so they uh because they hurt themselves and because they they were a danger to themselves and others they were uh they were locked in a in a psychiatric asylum you know in a, in a, in a special institution mm -hmm. under the care under the care of doctors of that time you know the, the type mm -hmm. of doctors you could have at that time and uh, who were, didn't really know what they were doing and basically um so they locked the, those children in in cells and the war arrives and they all basically i'm sorry i'm totally spoiling the movie I'm <laughs> for, <laughs> maybe, for those who yeah, haven't watched it just been out. <laughs> you'll have to cut into this because otherwise okay <laughs> and i think that wasn't spoiled too much i think people are yeah. interested now in, in watching it after hearing this 
uh, hopefully I'm just going to cut a little bit <laughs> Tiny yeah, bit yeah. Of what you, you saying, should totally saying. cut you know man. I take too much time <laughs> ah no that's that's fine that's okay so uh what are you currently working on well currently I'm working on uh, several projects I have um I have a, a really cool horror film I'm working on uh, who is produced by uh, Village Roadshow mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know with a really really original script you know it's uh, it's uh, it happens in a in a small village in Alaska you know and uh, so it's, it's a really scary uh, scary script and um and i have uh i have i have two films i'm i'm working on in france that i've uh, uh written one of them I'm, I'm finishing the script the other the script is finished and i'm i'm in casting mm -hmm. and um and uh, uh i have a, a film project in spain and another and a, and a british horror film that i'm that i'm also writing with, a, mm -hmm. with an english writer and we've almost finished the the, the, the script and we're uh, uh it's it's kind of like a horror film set in the in the north you know in the vein of um with the wicker man hereditary oh. you know i love the wicker man yeah folksy horror sort of thing okay. uh, and and it's uh, it's set in the north of England, and and that one is uh, the script is almost finished, and I'm I'm going to start sending it to producers and everything. Nice, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to all of these uh, films, but I, I I love movies like The Wicker Man. So yeah, that just should be yeah. interesting. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. But do uh, but I just thought, would you would you maybe uh, you 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 you're very much into the 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 horror <laughs> i have the feeling that you're very much into the, the yeah, dark and and right, now, genre. right so, now i have uh my projects i have um yeah i have two horror films my my two american and english projects are horror films mm -hmm. and my two french projects uh one is a uh, i have a project in spain and two in france the the, the one in spain is a is, is a noir film mm -hmm noir thriller with a serial killer all that sort of thing really kind of twisty fucked up script <laughs> and the one and, and the one in um the two movies in france one is a espionage thriller and mm -hmm. the other one is a, is a also a, it's a police noir movie uh, also with a, with a very fucked up script you know so it's all more a bit on the on the morbid side <laughs> if, if you like yeah, it's not it's not a musical. That's, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> I would still you, have to explore that genre. Would Would you be interested in doing something completely completely different from from that? Like, I don't know, a romance. <laughs> well, I've done I've done romance actually. Yeah. I've done uh, Discovery of Witches, which is a show. Uh, oh yes, right. That I was uh, involved in creating. Um, uh, is is actually a love story? You know, even even though it's. Uh, it's um even though it's uh it's fantasy it's mm -hmm. like the core of it is a is, is a love story yeah it's that's almost. right yeah i read about so, that you were part of that yeah yeah well directly the first two episodes yeah so i um, I, I created the show yeah. okay so uh thank you very much indeed juan i'm i'm through with my thank questions you. thank you uh, i really enjoyed that Pleasure. uh